the last video we produced this background map purely from vector data and in this video I would like to add uh, elevation information by using a digital elevation model that I downloaded and um, I already reprojected this elevation model into the EPSG 2056, the Swiss National Grid. Um, if you download ele um, elevation models, this might be a necessary step for you. We will cover the reprojection of, um, of raster data in the next videos when we talk more about terrain data. So um, we just used this already reprojected digital elevation model and that will make that visible for you. So currently uh, higher elevation are represented in lighter color, lower elevations are represented in darker color. And this is like the elevation data come here in with elevations ranging from 182 to 4296. To make that uh, visualization more map-like, we can use a color ramp again from pseudo color um, um, tool so that this looks more like maps that we are used to. To do so, again, I right click here on the layer, select properties and symbology, and currently it's the standard one channel gray scale. I changed that to one channel pseudo color. And now I can select here any of the already present uh, color ramps. But you will see that none of these color rooms are actually very good for representation of, uh, of altitudes. Um, the best option here might be something like this brown um, to blue color ramp. I could select that, apply that, but it doesn't work so well even if I invert it. So I can click here on this triangle and select invert classify again or at first I have I think oh, it works like that so now it's inverted um, still we have some green or bluish area for lower areas and uh, brown for higher areas it looks kind of like maps should look but not very good so luckily there are some ready ma made um, color ramps specifically for topographic uh, representation. Unfortunately, they are kind of hidden in QJS. To uh, get to them, you have to click here on this triangle besides color ramp and create a new color ramp. I, if I wouldn't know that, I wouldn't look there. So I click create a new color ramp and you can select from different uh, presets. So this Farbbrauer color brewer is very good is a very good catalog when it comes to visualization of categorical data uh, not for general elevation or similar things for that we have here in this installation at least from qjs we have the catalog cpt minus city and if i select this uh, color ramp type and click on ok i'm presented with a huge catalog of different color ramps 590 options are here for different purposes for temperature for precipitation um, temperature can look like that but also for topography and even topography with bathymetry if you also have uh, areas below the the ocean um, i would go for topography here and now we have several options here and you can select um, on your own the color ramp or try several color ramps out that works best for you. I kind of like this T push hoof, um, whatever that stands for, because it's it's rather subtle, but still it represents uh, the kind of natural uh, visualization from green to brown to gray, like we would expect mountain ranges elevations be represented in colors. So I can select that and click on OK. And I have again to click on classify because this color ramp has much more values than this here. If I do that, now the individual values are given to 
the height values and this is already saved uh, in the color ramp which height should have which kind of uh, color here. So I can apply that and click on OK. And now we can see here in the background, I will make the control borders invisible, um, that we have a um, map-like representation of um, altitude but or elevation. But still, it is not looking like the maps that we are used to because one element is still missing it. That's hill shading. So putting an artificial light source to the elevation model and uh, have also the shadow that the mountains would cast visualized here in the map. To achieve that, there is also a tool in QGIS, but to do that we need a copy of the digital elevation because we can either use that for hill shading or we can use that for the uh, colored uh, elevation display. So we need to copy this layer. That's trivial. We just have to right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. And now we have a copy of that layer that's currently invisible. So if I turn off this layer, it would not be there. In the end, we will need both. So I make both visible, although we can only see one of them at the time at the moment. So now I can right click on the upper of these two layers and select properties. And it's still in this one channel pseudo color. Now we can change that to hill shading or in German Schummerung. If I select this value here, I can in the upper part here change the location of the sun. So currently it's the sun is at 45 degrees, um, so half up in the sky and it comes from northwest, so 315 degrees here. And you can see this small thing here with that you can change the uh, direction of the sun. There's also Z factor. That is the uh, how much um, should uh, elevation count if this if you put that as a two. Uh, what is 400 meter will cast a shadow like if it would be uh, 800 meters or if it would be 4000 meter it would cast a shadow like the Mount Everest. Um, but most of the time if you're elevation model is in the correct uh, projection system, the Z factor of one should be fine. What you can also try is to use this multi-direction uh, hill shading. I will show you that um, in a second. So at first I just click on OK here for this hill shading and now you can see that I have here very uh, 3D looking representation of the mountains already available. Now keep that image in mind and I select multi area and now it becomes even more um, 3D-ish because now we have different light sources that uh, cast different shadows making this, this look more uh, diffuse and more natural. Okay, but now we don't see any uh, our colored background any longer only if we turn this layer off. And we can blend both of them together by selecting specific blending mode from uh, the symbology here. So up here we had the um, settings for the light source. Down here we can select other things. And this is true also for the pseudo color. We can select the, the brightness, uh, the gamma, that's kind of a color contrast, the contrast as such, and the saturation. We can also turn grayscale on here. Our um, elevation is already grayscale, so we don't have to do that. But what we have to do is to change this blending mode from normal. And you can see you have also quite several options here. You can try multiple of them. You can try them out. Um, but for our purpose, this multiply option might be the best one. So this multiplies the values of this layer to the layers that are below and by that combining the results. And if I click on OK, now you can see that we have here uh, the hill shading and the color of the layers combined. And with that we get quite a nice map-like representation of the area.
this is now very colorful and natural looking. If you want to have more uh, subtle option, I can use my this kind of water layer here. I can just overlay that to represent the area, but I also can move that below the hill shading and turn off the um, the colored option. And now the transparency might be even too big here because I don't I barely can see the area. So in that case, I might like to add more opacity to that layer. So now it becomes a bit more visible or turning the transparency off at all. And now we have this as a background layer here. So this is the more um, scientific looking result. In general, you can also probably try different um, brightness here for example if it's printed you would like to have a very white background so you would reduce the brightness of all your background or increase the brightness actually of all your background items so that this becomes whiter and more in the background of the visualization so with that we can produce our own background maps without any uh, artificial objects, any man-made objects, any labels, and any streets that would just uh, distract the viewer from our original data. And we are also kind of independent from the original data source, so we can also map areas where we don't have a good uh, map, a good background map available from the internet. And also we are very free to style this map, however we would like to have them. That's all for this styling. The other thing that we wanted to cover originally in the session was the minimap, but for that I have already uploaded a video. So with these tools, I think you should be able to produce a decent looking map on every part of the planet, as long as you have a digital elevation model available. But since these data are here um, are the 7.5 arc digital elevation model, so one of the coarsest resolution that you can get. We'll see that if I zoom in. But there are much better resolutions available. Um, also, unless it comes to really detailed mapping, you should be able to produce a background map that fits your needs.